got a beat from Kim, and she can fuck all night. What a game. What a game. The Kansas City Chiefs go into Orchard Park, Buffalo, New York. Mahomes has to play his first technical road playoff game, although he's played in three road Super Bowls, of his career, and the doubt was insane. This was a game where the Bills were really supposed to win. The Chiefs were underdogs in this. The Bills had been red hot, going into the playoffs hot. This was their time, but Mahomes had other plans. I just want to say that I was at this game, and the stadium parking situation was by far and away the absolute worst of any professional sports venue I've ever been to. It was it was like serving a, 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 a prison sentence. It was terrible. We had gotten to about within a mile of the stadium two hours before kickoff, and were sitting in a line of cars for literally more than two hours. It, it, being a mile from the stadium, it took two hours to get to a parking spot. It was just pathetic. I mean, they, it was like they had never hosted a football game in their lives. And so I actually missed the first five minutes of the game, even though I was a mile away from the stadium two hours before kickoff. So anyways, the, the Bills would get the ball first and they would go down and get three points at, after by the way, on the very first play of the game, uh, Stephon Diggs would fumble, Kincaid would dive and punch it out of bounds, which ended up being a penalty, but it was it didn't matter because on third and 17, Josh Allen would scramble and throw a lateral pass, which by the way was a forward pass and the refs missed it, but please keep telling me how the refs help the Chiefs every week. And it would result in, in a 16 yard gain and the Buffalo Bills would go for it on fourth and one and they would get it. So it was a, it was a fumble by, by Diggs that got punched out by Kincaid and then the very next play, uh, an illegal forward pass that wasn't called. So already looking great. And then the drive would come to a conclusion at a 27 yard Tyler Bass field goal. This is about when I walked inside that glorified high school stadium of theirs. The Chiefs get the ball back and on their very first drive, they would get down to the Buffalo 29, which would be a 47 yarder for Harrison Bucker and he would nail it. Although this one was weird because it literally, the wind was so strong, it looked like it got tipped, but no, it just was pushing the ball. That shit barely made it through stressful but it was uh, it was good into the wind kick was good from 47 yards very impressive stuff from Harrison Bucker the Buffalo Bills with their next drive would go down and get a touchdown as Josh Allen would scramble for the touchdown and the Bills go up 10-3 early the Chiefs would get the ball back and they're struggling to get in the in the in the end zone as they would make another red zone trip the Chiefs get down to the Buffalo 10 they have first and 10 Mahomes would have Kelsey open from a tight angle over the shoulder and he just overthrew him a little bit. It was a tough throw anyway, so I don't blame him too much. The very next play, they hand off to McCole Hartman and surprise, surprise, he fumbles it. Like that's never happened before. And thankfully it was picked up by Justin Watson and the, the Chiefs would only lose one yard on the play. On third and 11, Marquez Valdez Scantling got wide open in the end zone and the wind affected the pass, or at least from the naked eye, that's what it looked like, was that the wind affected the pass, and Mahomes wasn't able to hit MVS on the run for the end zone. They would have to settle for a 29-yard Harrison Bucker field goal to make it a four-point game. It's 10-6. Bills get the ball back, and on five plays, they punt. The, the defense of the Chiefs holds them to just 15 yards on this drive. The Chiefs, with their next possession, they would have six minutes, seven seconds left until halftime, it wouldn't take much time at all, actually. It was 2 minutes, 34 seconds. They would get down to the end zone. It was a Travis Kelsey pass from Patrick Mahomes. 22 yards for the touchdown. Wide open. Don't know how they let him get this wide open, but just a, a beautiful play design. 13-10. Kansas City takes the lead for the first time this game. Buffalo, with 3 minutes and 33 seconds left to go in the half, would march down the field using 3 minutes and 7 seconds of the clock, 75 yards, 12 plays, just for Josh Allen to have a rushing touchdown. It is 17-13 going into halftime, Buffalo on top. The Chiefs would get the ball to start the second half, and they would waste no time, as on just 6 plays, Mahomes finds Kelsey at the Buffalo 3-yard line for the touchdown. His second of the game, and just proving to the football world that he is not done yet he everybody thought that he was having a terrible year everybody thought that this this is his decline it's the it's the decline of kelsey he had a terrible year only a few yards short of a thousand yards uh which is a bad year for travis kelsey and this is this is probably his last year and it's He's having a down year. And then, no, two touchdowns against the Bills in the playoffs. Travis, playoff Travis, came to play. The Bills get the ball back being down three points. And the Chiefs defense struggles to contain the short 
passing game from Josh Allen. And on third and goal at the Kansas City 13-yard line, Josh Allen will find Shakir for the 13-yard touchdown. The Bills retake the lead. It's 24-20. And it's already shaping up to be a classic because when the Chiefs retake possession on the very next drive, they would go down and they would yet again get a touchdown. It would be an Isaiah Pacheco four-yard rush up the middle, wide open lane. He punches into the end zone and it's a touchdown. The Kansas City Chiefs are back on top, 27-24. And again, it's it's shaping up to be a very dramatic last possession wins the game game. It, it looks like it's going to shape up and be a classic until this happens. The Buffalo Bills get held to a three and out on their next possession. And Sean McDermott, calls probably the dumbest play I've ever seen a head coach call. Top five at least. On fourth and five at their own 30-yard line in the fourth quarter of the goddamn playoffs, Sean McDermott calls a fake punt to not just anybody, but to Damar Hamlin, a safety. Not a running back, not a wide receiver, a safety. We're going to call a fake punt to Damar Hamlin. Now, yeah, I'm sure he thought over all the storylines all the news headlines in his head if they had pulled this off oh what a magical moment Damar Hamlin gets a fake punt it helps the the Bills steamroll to victory and and it uh no that was the opposite it was a terrible terrible play call and to do this in this moment that can get the front office talking about your fucking job that is a pathetic play call newsflash McDermott this is not the Disney channel Chiefs get the ball back on the very first on the very first play of taking over at the Buffalo 30, Pacheco takes the ball 29 yards all the way down to the one yard line. And this game is one yard away from being out of reach with 12 minutes left to go. Until Andy Reid takes inspiration from Sean McDermott's horrid play calling and tries to one up it. I, I would say it's, uh, it's just as bad if not maybe even a little worse than running a fake to DeMar Hamlin. Andy Reid calls a little pitch to McCole Hardman, who had one carry already this game and fumbled it. Gives it to McCole Hardman on the one-yard line. A play after Pacheco had just rushed up for 29 yards and been rushing up the guts of the Buffalo defense all day. We're going to call a little pitch to McCole fucking Hardman, who already had a fumble in this game on his one carry he had. Are you trying to lose the game? Name me three good things McCole Hardman has done for the Kansas City Chiefs since his rookie year in 2019. He's had maybe one or two big plays that benefited the Chiefs ever. And that's it. This guy is proven trash. He is top five, seriously top five, worst Chiefs players I've ever seen with my own two eyes. He's up there with Orlando Skandrick, Lynn Elliott, God forbid I say that name. I mean, he is God awful. He is not NFL level, and he's only in this position because he's fast. He doesn't have football IQ. He doesn't have football skill. He needs to be running track and field, not the fucking NFL playoffs. Because he's garbage, and he further proves that. His second touch of the game, his second fumble of the game, and in a very crucial situation that would ultimately, if the Bills weren't stupid, end the game, and you would concede the game. That's that's how big this play was. If the Bills and Sean McDermott weren't stupid, they would have won this game because of McCall Hartman. I really, really thought that was the end of the game right there. Yeah, we're up three points. Doesn't matter. You don't just take that opportunity where Buffalo gift wraps you uh, of a fake punt and then you get it to the one yard line on your first play they gift wrapped that to you on a silver platter they amazon prime ship that shit to you and you hand it to mccall hardman that's like saying oh no that's all right i don't i don't want the gift it's okay you can return it it's fine i don't fucking want it that's exactly what this was giving it to mccall hardman was the dumbest fucking thing you could have done and I know I'm hard on Clyde, but Clyde probably would have gotten stuffed at the one yard line, but he wouldn't have fucking fumbled it. I can tell you that much. Just the dumbest possible play call in this moment. Dumb as hell. I, I can't get over how stupid that was. But, be, but you know who's even more stupid in this game somehow is the Bills. Because they would just go three and out with that opportunity. Three and out. I mean, it's it was bad. The Chiefs would get the ball back, and it's like a game of who wants to gift wrap the game to each other even more. I, I, it's, it was bad. The, the Chiefs get the ball with the 10 minutes left in the fourth after the Bills don't capitalize on the touchback. And the Chiefs, they would only shave off two minutes, run five plays, and they would end up punting. 
because this is what the Chiefs do, is they take a lead and they start playing conservatively to shave the clock off and to make it hard for their opponent to come back and win. Then I hate it. I, I wish we'd keep the aggression up. I wish we'd pass, and I wish we'd try to run up the score a little bit, but they don't do that. The Chiefs prove every week in the first half of games that they're very capable of scoring on anybody. It's Patrick Mahomes, for God's sake. You could score on anybody. And they just they let up in the second half once they have a lead, and it pisses me off to no end. So the, the Bills get the ball back, and this is Josh Allen's moment. This is Bills Mafia's moment. All the pain and heartbreak the Chiefs have caused them over the, over the years. This is their moment to get their revenge. They get the ball back with a chance for Josh Allen to lead a game-winning drive. It's working out. They shave six minutes off the clock. They run 16 plays. They go 54 yards until Josh Allen starts playing conservatively because he's scared of the defense. Sean McDermott's scared of the Chiefs' defense. They're so scared of turning it over that they're just running these very short plays. They're not. They're not. They're not throwing deep. They're, they're, they're playing as safe as they can because they're terrified of the Chiefs' defense. Well, I'll tell you what. Safe doesn't win you games, buddy. Tyler Bass would line up for a 44-yard field goal that would have left the Chiefs with a little under two minutes left had they tied the game. And Tyler Bass misses it. He misses the field goal. And the Chiefs take over. Bills have two timeouts left. All the Chiefs need to do is get a single first down. And they do that on two plays to Pacheco, who they should have just given the damn ball to on the one-yard line instead of McCall Hartman anyways. That's it. The game's over. Just a completely gutsy win for the Kansas City Chiefs, and they, they break the Bills' hearts once again. And like Nick Wright said, let's, let's not sit here and pretend like if Bass had made the field goal, Mahomes wouldn't have gone down and at least gotten the game-winning field goal with that much time and a few timeouts left. It would have most more than likely happened and the Chiefs are going to win this game one way or the other but it, it was uh it was a fantastic experience uh to watch this as a Chiefs fan the actual sitting in in the Bills Mafia experience wasn't so great I've never really thought of Bills fans as um uh bad per se but after sitting in their house doing nothing I'm not getting up and cheering I'm not clapping I'm not doing anything that would warrant any uh, hate from other fans I'm just literally existing wearing a Chiefs jersey and it's just left and right heckling in in a very um unsportsmanlike matter and just getting shit thrown at me and it's uh it was a hostile experience and because of that I mean it wasn't just a select group of people it was the whole fucking stadium and so because of that Bills fans you have earned your spot damn near the Philadelphia Eagles tier because that was a terrible experience and you have no idea how happy the silence leaving the stadium made me leaving the damn game. It was, uh, it was amazing and I couldn't be happier that the Chiefs whooped you once again. So with that being said, let's never give the ball to McCole Harmon at the one yard line ever again, please. And the Chiefs go on to their sixth consecutive AFC championship to play the Baltimore Ravens. I'll catch you for that. Go Chiefs. Peace out.